Good afternoon, everybody. Let's dive in to the world of luxury home buying trends. That's coming up right now. Welcome aboard to the Singapore Property Show 2021 by MediaCorp and our partners, 99 Group, as well as top real estate agencies, Propnex, ERA, Hutton's, Orange Tea, and SRI. My name is Daniel Martin. I'm so happy to be your host on this Saturday afternoon. Now, for our next session, Kevin Lim is Chief Agency Director of ERA Singapore. He's going to be joining us to share more about what exactly the new generation of luxury property buyers is actually looking for and how it's actually quite different from the high earners and big spenders of yesterday. Who exactly are these new rich luxury home buyers? Stay tuned to find out. And somebody's going to be a little bit richer after today's segment as well. Uh, coming up at the end of the segment, I'll be giving away two times $100 cash prizes to two of you watching right now. How do you take part? Well, later on, sometime during this presentation, you'll be seeing a QR code or a link pop up on your screen. Register via that QR code or that link. I'll spin the wheel at the end of the segment and two people walk away with $100 cash. Uh, but in the meantime, Time. Joining us right now, it's Kevin Lim, Chief Agency Director of ERA Singapore. Kevin, take it away. Hi. All right. Um, thank you so much. Um, thanks for having me back here for the second weekend. I hope um, everyone have a good week ahead. Um, it's always exciting when we talk about um, luxury um, property, especially in Singapore, um, where our country is small, you know. So, um, I guess for the last uh, weekend and uh, earlier today, um, I hope our listeners are having a lot of takeaway and um, we're not looking at a lot of numbers and a lot of graph. Okay, so today I, I, I will, you know, cut down my graphs and numbers, right? So, you know, what do I have in store, right? So a little bit about myself. So um, 19 years in the business. So I, I joined at a young age of 22, right? Nin uh, 19 years later, this young, um, 41. Uh, I'm, I'm currently the chief agency director um, with the ERA with more than 8,000 agents. And I've got my own team, preeminent group with more than 2,005 agents under my lead. So, you know, basically I, I, I breathe and eat uh, sleep real estate like almost for the last 19 years. So just a disclaimer. So these are all uh, research for my myself and our company. And of course, before you make any purchase, uh, please uh, consult your agents and your bankers and they can make a sound uh, purchase. All right, so what do we have here? You know, like, um, you know, instead of showing you graphs, you know, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, other stuff. So um, Singapore, right? Um, we know uh, DPM Hank uh, stepped down. And of course, um, I'll tell you why I'm showing you this, right? And of course, uh, PM Lee accepted the decision. So he's making room for uh, younger leaders with longer runway. And of course, um, you know, very soon within the next two weeks, I'm like impressed, you know, uh, the capability of the, the, the governments that like they are able to reshuffle the cabinets and, uh, you know, find new new minister, new talents and bought. And of course, within two weeks, uh, things are well on its way. Of course, uh, you know, when we say uh, our DP and Hing, it's, uh, you know, making room for young, uh, younger people. So, you know, we've got uh, just right across our country, we've got, uh, you know, uh, our Malaysia ex-Prime Minister, um, Dr. Mahathir, 92, still going strong, um, you know, as a, a Prime Minister elected. So I guess sometimes age is uh, really in the eye of the beholder. So, of course, you know, um, these are all news that I took off from the, um, the news. So we got here. Interestingly, it's not who, but interestingly, if if the tax is five six four million, well, how much is the revenue? <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about politics anyway. So end of the day, um, why our luxury market it's it's always in demand. Uh, why Singapore it's always uh you know favorable. It is definitely we all know that it's because of our uh political state stability. Right, so this 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 is very important because if you're going to put your money into a country, that's the the the, the basic things that you will want. And of course, um, just to, to take you guys around the world for a while. I mean, these are all the news. Just helping us out in the presentation. Uh, you know, unlike Myanmar, you know, now they're having a a, a a not a really good thing going on, right? Of course, like you know, the the military just took over um, the government, and I guess such things shall never happen in Singapore. 
And of course, um, you know, the COVID situation we are in now, uh, phase two, heightened alert. I, I'm supposed to be talking in the studio, but uh, you know, due to safety, I am doing it at the comfort of my home today. But of course, uh, you know, like India is getting really bad and uh, you know, we all know all these things. And of course, um, you know, like countries like U US, they are also delivering their, their budget, the infrastructure plan. You know, they are a big country, so $2 trillion, you know, it's very different from how Singapore it is. But, you know, uh, Singapore is also uh, pushing out budgets. And yesterday, if you, you know, um, the, the 800 million COVID-19 support package, you know, I'm not here to talk about all these things. I'm all driving at, you know, why people like um, Singapore, right? And of course, um, uh, you know, we all know this, like we saw on the internet where uh, uh, Granny got uh, bashed up and, uh, you know, stop Asian hate, you know. So I guess it, it does affect where a, the foreigners are going to put their money uh, with regards to uh, real estate. And of course, you know, not forgetting Hong Kong, which is not too far away and not too recent. Uh, I mean, not thankfully, but, you know, probably because of the COVID, the, the, the protests actually, you know, are not until today. So, you know, they probably can't be out protesting. So, you know, over here, you can see some Chinese clients actually looking, you know, with art shops, uh, with the main uh, wealth base and Singapore, Switzerland, London is high on the list. So I guess um, safety is always in, in everybody's heart, uh, whether it's a rich or the ultra rich or the super ultra rich, you know, people still care about safety of themselves, their business, uh, their family, most importantly. And the home is always uh, packed, even if it's an investment, it's still packed to safety, right? So uh, that's really important factor, right? And of course, um, uh, why, why people are all coming to Singapore is probably because point them to a favorable tax rate, all right? Favorable tax rate. So um, our corporate tax in, in Singapore, it's capped at 17%. And uh, look at the whole chart, we are right below Hong Kong, 16.5, we are 17 for our corporate tax. Uh, we, we went down all the way in the 90s, from 26 all the way down to today, uh, from 2010, 17%. And uh, this is make it very probably, you know, good for the foreigners, uh, especially the home of uh, family office. And of course, you look at the other countries, you know, they are many odd as high as uh, in France, 32%. And these are all money. These are all savings and tax uh, that the, the, the foreigners are looking for. And of course, uh, you know, for personal tax on a global uh, outlook, right? You look at Asia, we are at 28%. And of course, uh, even at average on a global, it's about 31.2. Uh, Asia seems to be, you know, not, not the highest. So that's good news for, for people as well, right? So these are average personal tax around the world. Of course, uh, if you look at um, Singapore itself, uh, we all know uh, our personal tax starts from um, zero. Of course, you, you, did, you don't want to pay zero because that's like 20K and below. And a cap at 22%, uh, you know, and of course for um, uh, flat rate for uh, non-residents from 15 to 22%. If you compare around the world, we are one of the most reasonable tax rate. And, uh, you know, this is actually really a good key reasons for foreigners to be here. Uh, you know, even China, 45, UK, South Korea, Japan, 56%. Well, just imagine more than half of your, your income goes to a income tax. That's not something, you know, uh, people like, right? And of course, uh, estate duties are very important, uh, especially for the high net worth, you know, the, the rich and famous. Uh, estate duty inheritance tax uh, has been abolished uh, since uh, 08 for Singapore and we are currently at 0%. And uh, this could be a problem for uh, um, really the ultra high, high net worth. So for example, if you look at I think the highest will be Japan 55, but Korea not too behind Japan at 50%. So what does that mean actually? All right. So if you look at a piece of news here, uh, Samsung, we all, I'm not a Samsung user, <laughs> a user, but Samsung family announced, you know, that they got to pay off uh, more than $10 billion of inheritance tax, uh, you know, after the air take over the succession. 
And these are all uh, in the news. So that is $10 billion of inheritance tax. If it goes back to here, that's because it's 50%. And uh, you know, in Singapore, that's what uh, it's going on, all right? And of course, um, number three, you can see um, there is really a, really a lot of increase of ultra high net worth family office operating in, in Singapore. And of course, uh, when we talk about ultra high net worth, we're talking about um, assets, uh, investable assets of about 30 million. And averagely, you could see it's about 100 US million and about 136 million sing dollars uh, in a single uh, family office called the uh, SFOs in Singapore. And of course, you can see a jump, uh, how much, um, I think that currently is about uh, uh, 400, right? So recently there's a uh, Bloomberg uh, Wealth, uh, super rich are choosing Singapore as the world's safest heaven. So safety, it is the key, right? And of course, of course over here, I was reading it, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know who Keith is, but you know, he's a car dealer and I've got a message through Facebook and buying a Bentley at 1.1 million without viewing, you know? so. That's what's happening uh, lately, you know, in the midst of the one year of COVID situation. So, of course, we look here, uh, family office trend, all right, what they're looking for, all right? Uh, framework, good framework, established uh, financial service, uh, pro-business government policy, transparency, private banking availability, and available of skilled labor for their family office and to help them in the operation. So, they are here either by um, wealth, wealth investment, estate management, uh, family governance, uh, do, do donate money, right? Uh, you know, legal advice, uh, entity admission, uh, business consultant, lifestyle, concierge service for their family, you know? So these are all what's going on. And of course, um, you know, city ranked by their property investment prospect Singapore, it's ranked uh, this last year, uh, number one and a year before on number two. And, uh, all in all, the key word here, it's always Singapore is a safe heaven for property investor, right? So um, the ultra rich people, uh, you know, picking Singapore as the top pick for luxury home, right? And uh, of course, recently, I think um, uh, the pandemic has kind of somehow put Singapore on a global spotlight. So people are asking me like, hey, uh, Kevin, it's like, how come? COVID situation for last a year plus, and how come the, the property prices are still um, going up, right? So I was thinking about it. it I know my reply is always, um, it, is, it is not that despite COVID that the price are going up. It is because of the situation that spotlighted Singapore that the price are going up, right? Uh, so it's it's really a how you look at, uh, look at it. Of course, um, the rich always can have uh, you know, decision to choose where they want to live and settle down. Uh, and Singapore is a place of choice. Uh, and uh, if you look at this news, just about uh, 2020 October, we have about reported 200 single office. Somewhere a year later, 2021, uh, recently, last month, we have about 400 uh, family office operating uh, from Singapore, right? And of course, uh, it's stubborn. And typically, an office, uh, a family office, even if it's like a small, medium size, um, spend roughly about one over $2 million in operations uh, around a year. Of course, uh, large and very large is like double digit millions. So these are actually going back into the country because they hire uh, people and they buy real estate, um, you know. Like for example, in this case, they, they need an office, they buy uh, shop houses, right? So boost family office, private wealth management, spur recovery. So it helps us in our recovery because money is coming in. And of course, here is the article about shop houses. Uh, I guess they are buying uh, for their uh, family office. And of course, uh, 51 transactions, uh, you know, totally in uh, 300 over a million, you know, according to data. Of course, um, the fourth point is um, low holding costs. So why is holding cost? You know, when you, you buy a property, uh, maintaining it, your, your, your stamp duties, your, your uh, buyer stamp duties, and your, you know, your running costs, and when you sell your agency fee, these are all running costs. So, um, you know, over here, we take a typical $2 million property. We have got three parts. We have got the cost of buying, 
cost of holding and the cost of selling. So of course, Singapore is here. It's here. Uh, maybe you talk about cost of buying. We, we are not the cheapest, you know, but do you know why Hong Kong and Vancouver and Singapore, because we are proven, have track record that people make money from property. That's why the cooling managers um, already put in a 20% ABS for foreigners. Uh, that's why here is at 20% of the total uh, cost. So if you look at what I'm interested to, to look at, it's it, over here, the light blue one. So the cost of holding a property over five years versus the rest is really low in Singapore, all right? Unlike even in uh, Vancouver, right? In uh, uh, Frisco, maybe the cost of buying is cheaper, but the cost of holding is high. And the cost of selling, it's also at this portion here, right? We, we, we you know, we, probably in the States, they, they charge higher um, agent permissions and a more fee that you need to uh, do sell, do give when you sell your property. So actually in all uh, here, it's because we have a low long-term holding cost for property for the foreigners, right? And of course, uh, the, the, the cost of buying may be large, but it's always the golden tickets for you to join into this very exclusive small country, Singapore, uh, to, to own one of the real estate. And if the government don't come in with that golden ticket, which in, in, in my term, golden ticket, but you know, in proper terms, it will be the taxation, especially the ABSD. Uh, I guess today we are all going to be looking at a lot higher uh, price uh, in across CCR, RCR, OCR. And of course, uh, you know, if we talk about tax rate just now, uh, of course, our ABSD for our foreigners at 20%. Uh, but you look around us, Hong Kong is at 30 and uh, we're not the cheapest, but we are just right in the middle, you know, versus the, the rest. Even at Vancouver, it's 15%. Okay. And of course, uh, the other thing is definitely our low interest rate, which you guys have been attending lots of seminars and every speaker talk about that because it is true. Because today we are at about 1%. Uh, I, I, I just refined my, my, my property loan at, as like 1% and uh, it's a lot of savings. So, of course, um, we do not buy uh, real estate just because of the... Uh, cheap uh, loans, but uh, look at how the CCR work is, uh, of course, uh, you know, some of them bought cash, they, they, they don't buy taking loan, but of course, if the loan is at 1% in the business, actually it makes a lot of sense for them to be uh, taking up loans, right? Of course, they got their private bankers and all that. Uh, and uh, in Singapore, at just quoting 1.1%, we are already uh, so much uh, lower in terms of our tax, uh, our interest rate, our mortgage interest rate, uh, compared to other countries that uh, people are looking at. And of course, um, you know, when we go to the fact of number five, the future of uh, luxury CCR properties, yeah, let's look at it. Uh, over here, wealthy Singapore still buying luxury homes amid a downturn because to them, it, it's opportunities here. Because to me, these people, they have the money, they are never, they are recession proof, you know, uh, you know, they ask money to buy at a better positioning like right now, you know. Uh, so over here, ultra-rich Asians and Chinese um, citizens eye Singapore luxury homes, right, uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, High-end homes are more resilient, right? And because they, the, the owners are, are all the ultra-high-net-worth, high like I said, and uh, buyers with financial capacity, right, capability, sees a comic downturn as an opportunity to buy. Right. And of course, CCR properties, the luxury segments, uh, you know, are always low in supply, right? You don't have a, a large uh, part of it because if you talk, talk about the three regions, CCR is always smaller than the rest of the two regions, right? And of course, uh, luxury home sales rose tenfold, that's 10 times you know, uh, in March, just recently, two months, uh, two months ago. Uh, most uh, buyers, uh, uh, Singaporeans, but you know, uh, foreigners pick up trophy homes uh, that we see all in the news. So they like trophy homes. Uh, and of course, money is not an issue. They just want something in a trophy country, that in a trophy location and a very trophy design in a way. It means iconic design. So they want uh, a, a very luxury uh, uh, homes that um, attention to small small details, even like car park lots. Uh, they would want the, the car park lots to be able to park their uh, Rolls Royce Phantom, their goals, and their driver's room for their drivers to, to wait for them. 
and the slope of the car park so that their supercars can go in and not scratch their bumpers. So small details are very important in, 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 in to me, my concern. And of course, uh, iconic uh, design by renowned architect, uh, very uh, reputable developers, and importantly, like iconic location. And recently we've been looking at news talking about Nassim, 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 right? A lot of record breaking at Nassim because Nassim, it is really a trophy address uh, you know, for, for very special people, <laughs> right? So over here, there are 10 times more uh, luxury homes uh, you know, in the Prime District, so in uh, March uh, than in February. And of course, you know, a uh, total of 546 luxury homes in Prom uh, District sold compared to the month before, which is only about 58, right? And of course, uh, high-end condo uh, search has, uh, you know, double up sales. Uh, transactions are the most expensive region CCR was 546 uh, units in March. That is an eight-year high. Ladies and gentlemen, eight years high. If you take today, 2021, you minus back eight years, that will set you back 2013. Just remember the magic figure, 2013, right? And of course, second tier highlights that 16 new sales habited, uh, you know, from 5 million and above, right? So 16 new sales. So eight years ago, you look at it, it's 21 three. If you remember, that's where um, the cooling measures just came into Singapore. And of course, you back then, you still see the per square foot of such sales. And you look at the middle part here, right? Until recently, it's been pretty quiet because probably people are still uncertain. The foreigners are still looking age. No, maybe the, the ABSD is not here to stay. You'll be removed. But I think after about a decade or at least eight years, uh, I guess things are already set in place. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite clear. I think the ABSD will not be going anywhere else. And then you start to see from one line transactions of such figures coming in until today, we all know we are very much, very close. 2021, we have actually very much, very close to what we have done in uh, the, the, the record high ever in Singapore uh, before co uh, before uh, uh, these uh, cooling measures, all right? Of course, uh, rising price uh, everywhere, everywhere, as in, you know, globe. Uh, we talk about New Zealand up by 23%, uh, US, 10.3, Canada 6.3, Australia 2, and Hong Kong 0.7, and Singapore at 3.2. So why, why only 3.2? It's probably because I think Singapore, Hong Kong, and all these places, the prices are already at certain level. And of course, they're all smaller countries, landless, scarcity, right? So that's why the growth is not probably that high, right? So uh, if you look at the article, I have uh, pinpoint some of it. So um, New Zealand says uh, the country's success in combating coronavirus make it a safe haven for returning Kiwis and investors. So same reason, right? For USA, uh, rates for 30 years mortgage plunge uh, to a record low. So, you know, interest low, right? So at um, 2.65 low, we are 1.1%. <laughs> okay, and of course, uh, Canada says that, uh, you know, they, they have an overheat, warning of an overheating situation uh, uh, going on. And of course, uh, here in uh, Australia, for every one uh, new listings added, 1.1 uh, homes is being sold. It's trying to say that uh, there's not enough uh, supply. Lah, all right. Okay. And of course, back in Hong Kong here, same thing, low interest rate uh, and insufficient supply have pushed up the Hong Kong property prices. Right. And of course, we can all feel the heat uh, from the news, from the ground, from the results, from the transactions. We can all feel the prices in a way of the heat is there. Right. So maybe we are very timely the last weekend and this weekend had the property show, uh, Singapore property show 2021. So I hope, you know, that will run on to it. But just, uh, why is the heat is coming up? It's probably because due to the high, uh, the high transaction volumes from uh, importantly, genuine local buyers. All right. You look at the whole chart here. What do we key factor take away? What are the key indicator take away? Importantly, uh, circuit breaker came in at uh, March, uh, sorry, April last year. And you can see the transaction uh, amount, uh, the transaction figure for the uh, new homes plunge right, to 293. Uh, if you ask me, oh, um, Kevin, is 293 low? I would say yes, it's very low. But hey, let's just look at it. Do then, shouldn't it be zero actually? The show flat is closed. There's no viewings allowed. We are on a almost like a full circuit breaker. 
all right? And uh, people have a lot of uncertainty, people are nervous, people are, you know, worry. So that's why the transactions drop, but still got almost 300 transactions. And how fast did people react in just one month? 509, and in another month, we are back at 1031, which is the uh, average of the previous uh, transaction. And then it's been boom town all the way until January when we hit a record past 2,000 units at 2,098. Uh, just even at uh, last month here, we are at 3, 000, uh, 1,342 units, right? So it is uh, very much to prove that the market in real estate market is uh, resilient. And uh, you, know, you can delay the demand, but you can never destroy the demands. And of course, um, to, to today, I guess one important fact is um, the, 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 the airports are all closed. Uh, even though, yes, the, the, the foreigners can buy online, but you know, it's sometimes not so favorable to buy online. If the airport and it's all ongoing, I guess the, the buying will be a lot uh, increased. And of course, uh, why we're having such a, a transaction today, uh, generally from uh, local home buyers, because I think for the last eight years, uh, the, the cooling measures have already put things in place. Uh, because if today uh, you're paying ABSD, whether you're a foreigner or your local that like pay ABSD, it only proves one thing. Uh, you have holding power and uh, money is not really an issue to you. Of course, today, if you're Singaporeans and you don't pay any single ABSD because it's your first property, I think it is a very good news because it proves that A, you're either, either using it for own stay, you know, or it's really a genuine first-time buying, right? And anyway, the speculators are all being removed uh, from market you know, over the last eight years, all right? And of course, uh, importantly, uh, you know, we see a very strong uh, take-up rate. If you break into um, CCR from the rest of the regions, from the amount, that, from the figures that we have, you can see just this year, four months, we are at 1125 in CCR. It's almost like the whole of last year, the year before, the year before. So it's in the rise. Uh, and of course, later, we'll take a look who are this buyer. So, uh, you know, just now we talk about uh, some genuine local buyer. So first quarter last year is at 1,006 and this year the number is at 2,848 and that is about 75% upside. Of course, you look at here, the SPR and the bonus, the uh, SPR especially is higher, but you must look at the numbers, it's not at, that huge, right? Now over here, uh, we talk about the numbers, uh, the, the percentage of the different buyers. Singaporeans, you can see importantly today in the market of CCR, uh, it's hovering at a round up of about 80% versus just maybe five years ago, we take 2016, it's at 54%, 54.5%. So that grew a lot in local Singaporean demand, especially in CPR. Um, <clears throat> um, property prices uptrend continue if we take about point A and point B. Why point A? Because that were the, the, the last cooling measures, remember? coming in where we had that bit mad rush that night about that three projects that uh, I think uh, Riverfront, Park, Colonia and Sterling. All right, and today, right, we look at the whole uh, ups and down in per quarter. You see there's different plots, different figures that importantly from point A in third quarter, one eight to today, first quarter, 2021, we have a total of seven up quarters and only three down. So definitely the uptrend is uh, shown in the trend here. All right, and of course, we look at the whole thing here, uh, the CCR segment over here. All right, um, you can see the growth compared to the last high at one tree, the last high, the, it's not even at the last high, it's still short of it, minus 8% for the CCR, but the rest of the two regions already surpassed the last high. And this is only to tell us uh, CCR has a lot of hidden potential right now. All right, of course, we look at the market trend, uh, you know, we have, uh, Record price coming in at 4,006 per square foot at uh, the Mark Patterson. It's still about $2,000 from the last high, but let's look at the further information. And we know uh, GCB landed properties. Uh, we, we heard uh, you know, one at Swettenham at 48 million, you know, uh, that's 2,893. But recently, then we have got um, buyers, uh, Sentosa, there's movement. Uh, there's a Fujian buyer that plays uh, 39.3. And we also heard that the Copper House uh, in just two years were also uh, sold and uh, you know, for a profit and uh, sellers even pay a one-year SSD and still good, have a good profit of, I think, at least um, $8 million. Of course, 
uh, we all know this, uh, you know, the founder of Nano Firm uh, bought a Nassim GCB. So you see again, Nassim is the where the location is very important to break record of, oh my God, $4,005 per square foot. Ladies and gentlemen, $4,000 per square foot landed, not strata title. That's really insane, right? But what is more insane to me, it's if you look back, the two buyers, right? The previous buyer is here and the uh, the other buyer was uh, here and he bought it in year 2000 at only 19.3. And if you do your sums over 21 years, in gentlemen, that is a whopping 5.4 million growth a year. Every year, the property just sit there and make you 5.4 million richer if you look at it this way. But of course, before we are so excited about this project, uh, uh, this record price, a while ago, another record came out at Clooney Hill, which is still in the vicinity of Nassim. Again, uh, 4,291 for a, uh, a bungalow that is still under construction at a uh, $63 million price tag because it's a much smaller plot compared to the part one uh, before. And importantly, the previous caveat was only $22 million just about three years ago, you know, and, and, and today it's at uh, upside by about more for 40 over million dollars, all right? Of course, uh, we go back to the Strata title condos. Um, uh, you know, we have got a uh, record breaking of uh, 4,008 uh, per square foot. And we have got uh, here, this news, everybody talks about the uh, Wang Wang, you know, the um, Taiwanese family bought the whole building, talking about trophy property, right? Buying a single or two units or one floor, is still boring. Let's buy a whole building at uh, $293 million, which results about $4,827. So why are these people coming here doing all these things? It's because really for, for, for their own reasons, of course, you know, uh, the things that I, I mentioned earlier early on, you know, so, so these are what, what is happening on the ground, reacting, reacting to it. And of course, um, we, we had the uh, Volopa 88 penthouse that is sold at a record high of so almost $5,000. And of course, we got Wallach uh, uh, sold at a record of 4009 Even the normal three bedrooms and uh, one bedrooms are also at a record high. They are still checked, right? right? And of course, uh, we have got um, you know luxury penthouse fueled by Chinese buyer again. Uh, Volopa 88 at a record of about $5,000 per square foot. And then we look at it this year. We, 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 I was looking at the mid cow model, which is fixed at seven, right? Um, the penthouse, so, uh, the developer sold it for a record $4,213 at just district nine. It's not your, it's not your nine, 10, 11, right? Of course, uh, a well hill residences sold the penthouse at $4,120. And uh, the sales you can see is really, really fantastic. Of course, then we have got our record breaking sales here at Park Mova, which is launched recently, all right, at $5,838 per square foot mark. That's really insane. And this Park Nova shows that. And uh, wow. But if you look at it this way, uh, on top of the 20% uh, ABSD, that will not be 5,008, right? If you add another 20%, it's almost like $7,000 if you look at it this way, right? Of course, now we look at the CCR in the last 15 years, right? Look at look back at the last 15 years. So, in, in just to give you some figures, CCR in the last 15 years have upsided almost 160%, 10 years, 23%, and five years, it's 30%, 13%. So, of course, in because the cooling measures came in and uh, slowed things down. And of course, District 10, in CCR, we know there's a lot of district, but District 10, uh, we're looking at 169 upside for the last 15 years, 31% in the last 10 years, and 18% in the last five years, right? So the, C, the D10 actually performed quite well in the CCR region. But if we talk about D10, uh, you know, since the news is all talking about Nassim, right? Nassim, Nassim in, in particular for their um, uh, real estate there, it's upside in the last 15 years, you know, 363%, 10 years, almost 100%, 92%. And uh, last five years upside by 75%. So, you know, so these are the, the, the core center region. Uh, of course, um, you know, they're your uh, very uh, traditional, uh, famous 9, 10, 11. And of course, we have the 1, 2, uh, Marina Bay area, 1, 2, District. And of course, as I mentioned, District 7. Okay. So, of course, I don't know. I just name them, code name them the all time reach 9, 10, 11, and the emerging reach 1, 2. Seven at the Marina Bay area. And we plot a graph, you know, we can see a trend line here that actually 
uh, quite close, but all in all, in 1911, the all-time reach, you have a better upside as compared to uh, a newer market, especially in the Marina uh, Bay area where uh, there's still currently a lot of constructions, white sites, and um, you know people are coming in. It's proven people have made a lot, lot of money since they bought the sales and MBR, but uh, the the quality, the quantity is still bigger in uh, 1911 because compared to uh, uh, District One, Two, uh, even Seven, right? Of course, um, that's the one I'm talking about. Our Singapore record ever in uh, 2011 at um, Patterson, this uh, the mark at um, 6,840 per square foot. But yet, like I say, just now when 5,008, it comes up side of 20% ABSD. It's actually quite close. Uh, because if you remember at 21.1, I think the cooling measures haven't kicked in yet. So this one probably do not have any cooling measures, right? Of course, why is high when you do have a comparison? We always need to be comparing around, especially when you're talking about luxury property because um, these buyers um, travels everywhere, right? So Hong Kong, um, Pan San mid level. Mid level is Pan San, right? In the neighborhood, a very famous uh, uh, mid level. Uh, a record of uh, 23,370 per square foot. So when you look back to this again, um, wow, well, it's still quite a gap, you know. So compared to Hong Kong. All right, of course, um, uh, today um, I'm happy to be here uh, because I just want to share with you one of these uh, very interesting projects that uh, I have here today. Uh, to share with you, that's uh, 19 Nasim. And since uh, riding on to today, uh, we got so many news in Nasim area, record breaking landed property, GCB, big plot, wow, $4,200. You know, that's really uh, worth a uh, while wow for us to look into what are the opportunity do we have in 19 Nasim, especially in the vicinity here. All right. So I think uh, importantly, like I say, it's an address called nine. Uh, Nasim, Nasim, right? So, you know, when you're free, go down and walk around, you will see it's very special. It's a quiet, uh, serene place in the mid of the city, busyness of the city area, right? Just tucked at the corner, uh, you're going from Tangling side. So I think Nasim is a dress that is very well sought after both locally uh, and uh, overseas uh, high net worth. And of course, if you look at uh, the map, I climb, uh, clearly uh, put them out. We have got the, of course, the Upmore area, the Balmora, the Claymore, the Draycott. And of course, we have got the Orchard Road, Orchard Boulevard, and uh, then we have got the Nasim. I, I remember, you know, maybe some, like just I mentioned, I was like 18, uh, 19 years in the business. And so when I was really entering the business the first three years, I, I, I had a very uh, wealthy client who had told me this story, which I want to share with everybody. Um, he says, you know, in Singapore, you know, that it's like the, Famous A B C D. I was like, what? What do you mean by that? They say, oh, the famous Atmore, uh, Belmora, uh, Claymore, uh, Draycott, and that's very sought after. And my clients are Indonesian, lah. So you know, you say Indonesia, you know, having uh, this address are very uh in, important and very prestigious when you're buying in Singapore real estate. And of course, at that point, uh, there wasn't any uh IR or the Marina Bay area. You know, it, you know, these things that exist at the moment at that point. And of course, then I learned from him that actually he said, you oh, know, when you make it in life, you've got to really have the address of Nasim. That's how I learned from my client. Wow, so so interesting, man, this Nasim. Of course, along the way, in the last 19 years, I think it's, it's, I've, I've learned it, I've seen it, and i uh, got clients uh, that is uh, in, uh, in, into it. It's really a very special uh, address. It's almost like the Valley Hills of uh, uh, you know, United States. Of course, uh, you know, uh, our site in uh, 19 Nasim is over here, okay? And uh, we're just uh, beside Glen Eagles, uh, beside the Interpol, where uh, the police uh, in the pole, right? And of course, uh, just very close proximity to uh, Ion. Uh, San Regis is over here, right? Uh, Ion Orchard is over here. Uh, Tangling is over here, all right? And of course, um, uh, we are a stone throw away next to the UNESCO site, which is uh, Singapore Botanic Gardens. And uh, task, um, to my understanding, uh, the, the project Naiden Nasim, it's actually built uh, very close to heart to uh, the Botanic Garden, uh, mimicking the, the greenery, the heritage, which I'll talk about it in a while, right? So of course, uh, one of the very good things that I saw, it's the Napier MRT station, which is just really right uh, nearby, you know, our, our project here, uh, Napier station, right? And of course, uh, this is a Thompson East Coast line, 
uh, which probably will be done um, pretty soon. Uh, of course, there's a slight delay due to the COVID, but uh, Napier stage they stand in here. Uh, we have got the Orchard uh, Boulevard, the new uh, station coming up, uh, just one station away from Napier. So of course, uh, you know, uh, looking back at the why this all these records are always at Nasim because it's really proven that Nasim, if you ever want to drive record, you know, the first person to drive will be definitely Nasim. All right, of course, then the second news again. So we look at the entry price as Nasim. I think that it's it really important. Uh, arise around Nasim here. Uh, you know, if you understand the market, uh, like Nasim, it's a very hard to enter, uh, uh, you know, district probably because number one of the high entry prices, uh, because the unit, uh, they are luxury and they are usually built really large and uh, three, four bedrooms, penthouses, high ceiling. And of course, you look at here, just um, like we look on the couple of things that I highlighted, Sage, entry price is a very 11 million, eight Nassim, nine million, Nassim Park residences, about 12 million. And I look around, the entry is really high for Nassim. Uh, the Nasim, you can look at these are like almost 2,000 square feet. They are the three bedrooms. Their entry to a three bedroom is almost about seven, eight, nine million already. The bigger unit over here at the 4,000 plus, the four bedrooms, the entry are almost like 15 million. For the uh, duplex and all that bigger units, entry is like 17, 18, 19, 20 million over dollars. All right. So Nasim has always been a high reach uh, 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 for, for entry. Uh, Nassim Park residences, like I still mentioned just now, these are 3,000 over square feet at uh, more than $10 million entry prices. And of course, if we park what's available in the market today, uh, the best of the best launches, uh, we have five here, and we got five projects here. And you can see the average uh, per square foot at about um, uh, 3,900, almost $4,000 uh, per square foot. Of course, then we talk about the high of the, uh, the, the best of the best is almost uh, $4,700 per square foot. Uh, and this project, I think Nassim, that I'm introducing today, an uh, average PSF of about only uh, 3500 per square foot. So that's why I want to bring to your attention. So uh, pro uh, at a glance, the pricing at uh, 19 Nassim, one bedroom, uh, it got a very perfect entry price of just 1.9x, below 2 million. Okay, let's run up to $2 million. I think it's hardly you can find in any entry into Nassim address, Nassim Hill in this case. Two bedrooms, two bedrooms at 807 square feet, it's 2.73 you know, million onwards. And uh, three bedrooms at 1,004, they are still relatively comfortable size you know, at $5 million. If you look at the chart just now, it's probably about seven, eight million entry price. And of course, uh, at 3,005, compared to what we recently have done at uh, 5,008, I think there is a, a, a reason for you to look into this project, all right? And of course, like I say, the high of 6,008. Uh, the land cost among CCR, you can see, is actually also rising, you know, uh, from uh, the one that we talked about, Park Nova, having a, a 2009 uh, land cost, right? And of course, a uh, reason just about, I think, two days ago, uh, you know, we have bid it to, to GLS at Chenga Garden and of course, uh, Amokyo. But of course, today we're talking about luxury property. But if you, can you imagine even the EC at Chenga Gardens probably going to, probably going to launch at least break even about 1,002. I think it's packing up the, pushing up the pricing as we go. So there's a really a lot of upside in CCR now. And of course, another very key important point to me, it's the developer. For my, my team, Nassim, it's Capital Land. Capital Lands have built all these projects that I highlighted uh, you know, to you. And of course, um, Capital Land is the, the property arm of Capital Corporation, one of Singapore flagship right, uh, multi-nation company with a global footprint of more than 20 countries. Uh, Capital Corp you know, provides solutions to sustainable urbanization, you know, focusing on energy, environment, urban development, and connectivity and access management. And of course, uh, Capital Land has developed many waterfront homes. They are ex expert in waterfront homes if you look at it this way. At, of course, we know they own Capital Bay. You know, if you go to Capital Club, we got a Privé Cafe there. Uh, you know, in the pristine of Marina Bay, like reflections, very, very iconic reflection, right? Uh, chorus, uh, Reef at King's Dock, which originally the launch, the Marina Bay Residences and Marina Bay Suites. So, you know, they are like really good at all this uh, very nice, you know, because this is where uh, Kappa Island is, the Kappa Club over here, 
and then all the projects by Keppel, including uh, the very uh, iconic uh, uh, reflection. And of course, back in the Bay, Marina Bay area, right? So of course, they are also awarded um, BCA awards in you know, 2020 and uh, the, the years that they've been awarded. And then uh, of course, this is what the BCA Quality Awards is about. Uh, importantly, for 19 Nassim, you know, for 2020, these are all the awards that uh, the developers have gotten. But importantly, uh, 19 Nassim, right? As well as Reef, we've got the Green Mark Gold Plus Award. So this it's a fine point that I just want to share with you. Uh, it's a good residential envelope transmittance value achieved in dwelling units, right? So, you know, the material that they use, right? Five tick energy saving aircon system and uh, use of uh, efficient energy efficiency in the common area. Of course, uh, good uh, efficient fittings promote uh, water conservation and extensive greenery because we are so near botanic gardens, like I say, and of course, it's fully automatic irrigated, right? And of course, um, a very important thing is the architect um, is very important for a luxury property. So in this case, we have got, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Chan Fu Kim, uh, the principal architect of uh, uh, SCDA, and they are very famous. And of course, a lot of uh, very renowned uh, uh, um, properties around Nassim's are developed uh, by uh, SCDA, including the record breaking uh, the mark over here, right? Angola Park. Uh, these are all, you know, like Clooney Park residences, a lot for you to take a look. And of course, uh, this is a sculpture, a, a, a sketch of our project, uh, 19 Nassim. And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Chan says um, the building is co uh, conveyed as a floating volume, uh, conceived, sorry, conceived as a uh, uh, floating volumes with uh, continuous landscape uh, that planes through, you know, these volumes are articulated with, uh, you know, uh, especially profound architecture screen that likes that let the lights filter into the interior of the of the of the pro uh, property, right? Because, uh, you know, um, I think uh, from the first start. Um, now before I jump into that, I just want to share with you a, a very short introduction of the project uh, Nineteen Nasim. Right. Um, and this is our facade um, of our project. Um, this is the main entrance, right? We've got two um, blocks of uh, condos here. And um, uh, this is at the back where the lab pool is, a 30 meter lab pool. Um, back of the, uh, is the Napier route. And then of course, um, we are, you know, one thing I think is pretty interesting about 1907, it's, um, it's not just smart home, it's AI, right? AI. So um, smart, home controls, smart community management, smart lifestyle gateway, gateway, sorry. 
So what do I mean by that? I think I'll probably show you this is easier to explain next. Wow. So, you know, so, you know, when we have uh, visited our friends in the condo, right? And every time then there's more people, you got to queue up and then the guy will talk to you, you know, especially now, uh, you know, in the, 19, uh, the COVID-19 situation. So, um, uh, so, you know, one of the um, details, the small details is, you know, the, the AI allows you to um, pre-register your friends and then they recognize the car and it will just open the gantry and let your friends come in. Isn't it a more wonderful uh, connection of feeling to it, right? And of course, uh, early on to the video, something that really caught my mind, it's a heated swimming pool. So they got heated jet pool, um, you know, if you look at it. Um, I run through some floor plans with you, of course, um, this is a webinar, I, I don't want to you know, really bore you down, let's keep it, um, let's me just uh, do it quick, quickly. So uh, one big room, you mentioned about 1.9xx, uh, inwards entry price, they gentlemen, I think, this is really worth um, for you to consider. Right now, of course, 19 nothing we haven't really launched. It's, it's, it's not even really at our you know, soft launch. It's just a really couple of private preview. So, you know, just do reach out to our, um, any of our agents uh, from ERA, right? Um, they will be able to give you more information. But uh, one bedroom unit here at 570 square feet, a very typical, um, very efficient layout uh, coming from here, right? And of course, then the kitchen, the um, bedrooms right so very typical one bedrooms at 570 right for this stack we're talking about stack eight right eight is over here over here and of course then the two bedrooms are at 807 square feet at 2.7 xx uh, million onwards it's um, 807 square feet uh, also very useful typically up from here you come in you got two bedrooms tucked in here right and of course, um, we have a show flat that we can show you. Uh, it's slightly bigger than this unit. It's at um, 969 square feet, stack 02, right? This is a, just an illustration of a show flat. Later, I'll show you the show flat video, right? We got, if you want slightly bigger, we have got the two bedroom deluxe, deluxe. So it comes with a private leaf, stack 10, uh, 1109 square feet, starting from 3.7 XX million. This is the layout. We've got a private leaf lobby come in here. So the the, um, the master bedroom is on the left side and then the common is on the, the other side of it, across the living hall, right? And we've got an enclosed kitchen over here. And of course, if you want something even bigger, like three bedrooms, we've got the uh, deluxe with the um, private leaf, uh, Stack 01. Stack 01 is very interesting. As you could see, uh, it's built. I think this is very, uh, you know, I, I think personally very famous Chan Si Tian uh, SCBA, you know, where if you look at um, Angular Park, it's also you got a four bedroom, the high ceiling, if you can see my hands, I think it's like a jigsaw puzzle like that. This is very cheap up of him. I love this so much, you know. You know, do go and uh, find out more, you know, uh, by, by studying it. So we've got the three bedrooms here at 1,410 um, square feet at 5.3 entry uh, with private lift lobby. If you can see here, it's um, where uh, there's a, this is not a void. This is a not part of the property because here belongs to the other units on top with the high ceiling. So if you don't want the high ceiling, so we have got this one at 1410 square feet. So if you want the high ceiling, it's actually taking, you know, just saw that part over here. I just put three dots here, right? So here is where you have got the high ceiling and you have got a 173 square feet, starting from 6 million onwards. And uh, we only got just a couple of units, like for this one, we only got the second floor, four, six, and eight. And for earlier on, we also got a three, five, seven, nine. You can see it's alternate because like I say, it's like the alternate stack. They're all stack one, 
All right. So uh, we have got the high ceiling over here. You can see from here, there's a high ceiling. And this is the, 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 the impress, the, the photo of our uh, show flats, right? Stack 01. Of course, uh, I'm gonna show you, just let me show you the video of our show flats. Okay, um, so that's conclude the two show facts that we have for you to view by appointment. Let us know, you know, just give us a call. Of course, uh, just an overview of uh, all the stacks, right? Uh, we have got our one bedroom, one plus study, two, two plus study, two bedroom deluxe, and the three bedroom deluxe. And you remember I talked about the high volume ceiling. So these are the high volume one, this is the normal one, and then you just go alternate way up, right? So, um, Altogether, uh, 101 units only, 101 unit only in this very exclusive 19 Nassim. For the dress itself, number 19, Nassim Hill, I think, wow, it's and the entry price again, uh, 1.9x, 1.7x, and 5.3x. I think this is really an opportunity for, for an entry into having this very much join the latest. <laughs> You've got the Nassim address, it's so, so prestigious. Of course, um, you know, on uh, just a little bit of uh, the lobby area, the level one, uh, we've got a very nice, I love this courtyard where you can, uh, you know, the cars do it around about and the cars here. There is a side gate to Napier Road, which is towards the MRT over here, uh, the 30 meter lap pool, right? And of course, the various uh, facilities that you can find uh, over here. All right. And of course, uh, at level 10, uh, there's a club level. For the facilities, um, on remember I talked about the heated jet pool. They are on the level ten, and uh, you have got um, uh, the rest of the items here in the, uh, in the in the club level. So you got heated jet pool. You've got your sun deck, grill, lounge, right? And these are on the level ten. Of course, uh, um, you know this is my second um uh, weekend with you guys. I had the 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 first one on last Saturday. And, uh, you know, it's been my pleasure. There's only so much time I can speak to you. And, uh, you know, I hope you find this information useful. So um, anyway, I'd like to stay connected with any one of you. So, you know, feel free to add me on the social media. But thank you so much for watching. And of course, now uh, let's take some questions. Uh, let's see if there's anything I can uh, help to answer, right? Give me a second. Right, let's just pull out. Um, let me see. 
uh, how do you compare District 7 to District 1? Uh, Midtown versus Marina Bay area and, uh, you know, versus the New Harbour Front. Well, um, like I say, um, from the statistics, uh, definitely the, the all-time reach 1911 seems a little bit more favorable, you know, but um, that's just pure statistics. And of course, if you ask me between uh, uh, seven and one, I think one is always uh, the more eyeball, uh, you know, uh, district. And uh, currently, of course, we've got um, uh, older condos like uh, uh, the, the sale and all that. And of course, uh, there aren't much uh, launches there. I guess there's only one, which is I think Marina. One residences uh, presented last week. And of course, uh, then recently, Mende Bernan at uh, District 2 was launched. Uh, so how to compare? Um, I definitely think um, uh, from statistics, uh, you know, I saw that uh, District 1 actually, you know, we saw that the profit quite a bit from the, the sale and Marina Bay residences, right? So, um, well, uh, next question, uh, what is the take on the future of Orchard Road and uh, Bukit Timah compared to up and coming places like Boogies with Midtown? I, I'm a little bit more traditional, so I think, um, Orchard Road will always be Orchard Road. And of course, you know, in the last master plan, there's a lot of rejuvenating coming up along a uh, Tangling area, which is uh, quite close to um, where our subject 19 ASEM is. So that makes me excited. All right. And of course, um, uh, uh, um, to me, Bukit Timah, it's always a place that it's so favorable for the landed property. Right, and uh, if we look at um, uh, uh, statistically for um, a, a strata title, you know, I think uh, for me, uh, uh, title, I mean, landed titles are more favorable in Bukit Timah area, in my opinion. So, of course, like I say, uh, you know, uh, I think future of Orchard Road is bright from all the presentation that I presented to you. Uh, at CCR now, uh, it's it's still at a, 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 a not a high. And if I can, I will go for the best of the best because that's where um, CCR is all, all about. Of course, um, let me look at um, further questions. Uh, uh, is it worth to buy a resale in a CCR, which is slightly more expensive than, okay. Uh, of course, we're talking about um, resale versus new and that it's always what people are caught up with. And of course, if you refer to what I have last week, uh, which I think you can do the review uh, of the videos in the recorded by the organizer, uh, SPS. So I think there's a recording. Uh, the, the, the disparity, it's always, uh, people are always in the middle of uh, uh, assisting old condo and a new one. But from statistics, uh, again and again, it always shows uh, probably because of the behavior of Singaporeans or because of the size of the country, we're not that big. Uh, and of course, you know, like I say, the behavior, the lifestyle, and the way we are. We are in Singapore and we see a three-year-old car. People say, I'm driving an old car. You go just across our, uh, Malaysia, a 10-year-old car is like a new car. So it's just perspective of things. And if you see for the case of uh, comparing new, they always make quite a hefty profit at, upon TOP. That is a hot uh, trigger point there to sell. But if you compare a lot of projects from, from RCR to OCR to even CCR, it's proven that the newer project always get a hefty profit, a lot better profits in at TOP. All right. And of course, a lot of the older condos, the prices are still slow because you must understand if you talk about 9, 10, 11, a lot of these people bought it a lot cheaper than you entering the market now. So it's always about the three point called entry price. Are you buying at a risk? And also the, the exit strategy. All right. Uh, I think there's another question if I have time. Uh, so let me see. Um, okay, the 99 year lease is uh, oh, for 19, uh, Nassim. Uh, the 99 lease starts from uh, 17 June uh, 2019. Yes, that's for uh, 19 Nassim. All right. Um, so with all this luxury home being priced up and marketed to foreigners, are we on the verge of Singapore local being priced out just like the other countries but let's just take a look at it again i mean luxury property it's always if you are in luxury property i think then price out is there's no such term called price out because you know that is where that is in the luxury segment all right so of course uh, the foreigners are uh, very much um uh, uh, more focused on the, the luxury uh, property 
And of course, uh, their behavior is slightly a bit different, uh, slightly a bit different. Uh, you know, like they, they don't look at profit and loss the way uh, other people look at profit and loss, you know, because these are ultra high net worth. And of course, like I say, their behaviors are very differently. Like sometimes we can't even find a caveat to do comparison because they, they, they don't watch caveat, they buy uh, full cash. All right? And of course, like I say again, um, it's very uh, 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 much depending on the cooling measure as well because when there's any measures, um, CCR will be like the, 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 the quite reactive one uh, because it's largely supported by foreigners, to be honest speaking. Uh, of course, if you look at, um, say, luxury property, in this case, we talk about $5 million and versus like a more mass market condo in Singapore per se at about $1.6 I mean, I understand people do market a $1.2 million condo at less, less luxury because the term luxury is really up to you to define. But let me say about luxury in our terms, uh, 5 million up versus 1.6, which is like a more mass market. Definitely, you ask me, I say that the, the, the mass market probably perform better than the luxury market. But but because we don't look at luxury market, like like, like how we supposed to look at it, you know. So that's why. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see if any more questions. Um, uh, uh, Landed property, what's the upside if foreigner cannot buy? Uh, yes, um, of course, um, the, we all know um, foreigners um, can't buy unless they've got a approval from LDAU. So um, they can still buy Tentosa. Um, a lot of foreigners are then Singaporeans already. And um, you know, we have seen the news where um, our favorite hot pot, Haiti Lao, bought um, a GCB. Uh, Jet Li, stepping off from Singapore. So, you know, so they, they, they are Singaporeans or they have got their permit to buy uh, these landed properties, lah, right? Um, okay. I think that's about all the questions. Of course, if you've got more questions, I probably could um, take another opportunity to answer them, uh, you, know, you know, offline. Uh, but um, that's all wrap up today um, um i think i've tried to answer all the questions um already so thanks thanks for joining me in for the second round in uh, this um singapore property show 2021 i really wish you all the best in your property um, venture trip um do take a look at um ccr it's really interesting and i uh, hope these numbers and uh, stories and facts and figures can give you a better uh, uh you know positioning to look at your plans ahead I wish you all the best. And this is Kevin from the Yari Premium Group signing out. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Kevin. Now we understand better who the luxury home buyer of today is. Is it you? Is it you? How about I take this opportunity to contribute to the uh, savings fund a little bit for the next home by walking, uh, giving two of you a chance to win that $100 cash prize right now. That's right. During the presentation, you saw the QR code or the link. You clicked on it. You registered. Registration is now closed. And I think it's time to spin the wheel to find out who the two lucky winners are this time. All right, let's give that a nice little spin and see who we've got first. Walking away with the first $100 prize from today's session is... Congratulations to Risu. Risu, you're the first winner. $100 coming your way. I've got one more to give away for this segment. Let's go. One more spin. Here we go. All righty. Fingers crossed for each and every one of you. I know this is going towards the housing fund. Let's see who is the next winner right now. And it's Linda. Linda, congratulations to the both of you. I hope that made your day. Thank you all for joining us at the Singapore Property Show 2021. Don't forget, um, our SPS team will be in touch with our winners to find out, to let them know how they can redeem that $100 prize. And if you didn't win this time, we give away two $100 prizes after every segment. So if you want to find out about the upcoming sessions happening today and tomorrow, head on over to the SPS 2021 website, sps2021.99.co and register there right now. I'm Daniel Martin from Media Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday afternoon.